said John. One of the nurses at the hospital called me down, stating that my brother was on the line. What's going on with mom? He asked me. Didn't you visit her last week? I got a call saying she was dead. My heart sank. I did. There's no way she's dead. She seemed fine when I saw her. He told me that I should probably go check on her. And so, after my shift, I took a train straight to Busan. I make it to my mother's apartment, unlocking the door of my spare key. I go searching for her, calling out her name. Amma, are you home? No answer. I find a post-it note on the chair my mother usually sits on. It's for my mother's caretaker. She had gotten very ill when I was away, and she's gone. I try to compose myself. I look around the chair, trying to find a safe. I open it up, and it's empty. I remember my mother putting money in that safe for when I need it. For when I could start a new life in Canada. I didn't have anything here. All my savings were gone. I called my brother. You took it, didn't you? My brother asked me what I was talking about. Don't play dumb. You, mom, and I were the only people who knew the combination to that safe. She was watching it for me. You know I was saving that. He told me he didn't take my money. He told me that the nurse taking care of mom probably did. I knew she wouldn't do that. He knew I could barely afford anything other than what was essential. I asked him why he would do that to me. I told him that I don't want him contacting me again. I didn't want him as my brother. I was called next in line. I stepped up, handing the immigration officer my papers. Hi, I would like to apply for the Federal Skills Worker Program for Canada. The officer flipped through the paperwork. Miss Park, you're a nurse? The officer asked me. Yes. And also a midwife. Yes, miss. It seems like you're a great candidate. With your application filled out, I'll make sure this is processed within six months. I thanked her. I was excited to start a new life. I needed a change of scenery, but to be honest, I was terrified. And for the first time since nursing school, where I was excluded from others and just focused on doing well, I felt alone. I didn't have the guidance of my mother, and the distance between my brother and I grew stronger. Many nurses were also with me, all about to be dispersed into tiny Canadian towns. I wonder how many of them were also feeling alone. I didn't know what to expect, but I knew I wanted to see new things and get myself out of this situation. In Canada, I worked on the maternity floor. The head nurse introduced me to the others. You came from South Korea, right? One of them asked me. Yes, and you can call me Sejun. Your name sounds so exotic and foreign. I really like it. My name is Sarah, by the way. I wasn't sure how to react to that. For me, it was a really normal name. I felt uncomfortable, so I just said thank you. Another nurse started talking. South Korea. Why don't you just say you're from Korea? I just say I'm from Canada. I could tell that this was going to be a long day. Actually, South Korea is independent from North Korea, although right now they are trying to take back South Korea. The head nurse, Nurse Claire, asked Nurse Frankie to show me around, in which she replied that she'd love to. And finally, there are another set of bathrooms down this hall. She told me, Shoot, I have to go help this one mother now. I promised to ask some of the other new mothers for some milk to share, but a lot of them were uncomfortable with the notion. Can you try asking some? I asked her if she couldn't breastfeed. No, she told me, 
and so many new moms have been coming in just like her. Honestly, I don't know what to do. I suggested that I could teach them and some of the other nurses how to make baby formula. I used to make some for mothers with the same issue back home. Nurse Frankie seemed confused. I realized that the training I had in Seoul was a lot different than the training nurses had here in Canada. The other nurses thought I was a lot less qualified than them because I was from a foreign country. Many of them protested for me to redo my training, even though I had learned more than them. I was the only Asian nurse at the hospital, and I can't help but feel as though they were looking down on me because of it. A well-known doctor in the maternity section of the hospital called me over. Miss Park, your assistance is required, he told me, and so I followed him. When the doctor and I had walked into the room, a pregnant woman was sitting on a chair. Hello, Mrs. Lee, he said. Meet Mrs. Park. She will be assisting me for your checkup today. Once you left the room, I asked her a couple questions about her pregnancy status. A few minutes later, I told her that it was time for me to check the position of the fetus. Congratulations, I told her. You're having twins. Excuse me, she stated. I was told by the doctor I was only going to have one child. Are you saying he's underqualified? He might have just missed the second child. I can assure you, I've been working in OBS for a while, and I am certain you're conceiving twins. No offense, she began, but I'd much rather trust a doctor than a stupid nurse. Soon after, Dr. Johnson came into the room. Sorry it took so long, he apologized. Your nurse told me that I'm supposed to have twins. You should probably get her retrained. She's fresh off the boat, isn't she? Dr. Johnson apologized again. I'm so sorry about her behavior. I'll give her a talk right after this. Why was he apologizing? He asked to speak to me outside. You are making a mockery out of this hospital. She's had three other checkups before. Are you saying that none of them checked? It can be difficult to tell if a woman is having twins just by touching if you haven't worked in OBS for a while. I understand that. You really shouldn't say things like that unless you're certain, Mrs. Park. You caused Mrs. Lee a lot of distress. But I know I'm right. Why didn't they believe me? I had just as much training as they did in nursing. I even learned more about nursing than they did back home. I was one of the best nurses in Seoul. What did they have that I didn't? Why did they think I was less than them for something I couldn't control? The color of my skin doesn't define me. All right, he started up again. Let's get an ultrasound, and if you're wrong, you have to leave this hospital. You won't be able to work here anymore, and I'm sure you won't be able to work the same position at another hospital for such a big mistake. Dr. Johnson, that's not fair. Something like this wouldn't be seen as a big mistake if other nurses did it. Why was I different? Fine by me. You will also have to pay fees for the ultrasound if you're wrong. They are pretty costly for us, and this is a big waste of time. Fine. So be it, I exclaimed. We waited outside the room for the ultrasound, standing on opposite sides of the hallway. Dr. Johnson cleared his throat. Why would you risk your career for something like this? I'm not risking anything. I know I'm right. He was laughing at me. You really are something. You know that. He talked lowly to himself, but I could still hear him. I think he wanted me to. These foreign people really think they know everything. You know, I've worked here longer than you. Why can't you just trust me? Because you're a nurse. I'm a doctor. 
obviously I'm more qualified than you. It is going to be a whole lot calmer now that you're gone. He and I both knew that wasn't what he wanted to say. But yet, I didn't feel like confronting him. A doctor walked out of the ultrasound room. Well, she's having twins. <laughs>